Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. And what I would, what I would ask is for everyone out there to smash the thumbs ups, uh, ring the bell. Of course, I want to let everyone know that we are sponsored by Tusk. Rob is here representing Tusk as a cryptocurrency payment for the firearms industry. So they do sponsor us, uh, full disclosure to everyone out there. And, um, you know, just bear that in mind as you as we have this conversation. I think it's great that we've that we've got Alex and we've got Mark because maybe they can come up with some questions for you, Rob, uh, you know, some tough questions for the folks out there. I, I'm sure a lot of the, the audience out there. Um, and maybe we can get, we can ask people that who knows about cryptocurrency who understands cryptocurrency out there if you do let us know now show your hands uh, if you notice my hands are not going up so we're working on you dude we're yes. working on you yeah yeah exactly um, but if you guys don't know this is a great opportunity I, I feel like to get into this um, Alex you were saying that you're you're involved in cryptocurrency right yeah, we dabble a little bit uh, in mm-hmm. the community. Um, mm-hmm. So for uh, for well, okay, a lot of our community focuses around decentralization of all things, mm-hmm. um, firearms manufacturing becomes a part of that, and you know, along with that, you have decentralization of your money, uh, which you know, Bitcoin cryptocurrencies do pretty well. Um, our community dove heavy into it during our time on Keybase. Uh, we were getting uh, stellar lumen drops, uh, airdrops while we were there because we had, you know, they, they were doing a thing where you just had an account and you got uh, this cryptocurrency drop. And a lot of people would donate that money to developers to fund projects. So um, it was an interesting time to say the least, given how the whole Keybase thing shook out in the end. Um, I still funded... have my lumen. I still have my lumen airdrop from that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they they funded quite a bit of our development, and uh, it sort of put us in the crypto space more heavily as developers. Um, I personally run a Bitcoin uh, BTC Pay server node, and I run I, I accept Bitcoin payments in my shop, and I run a donation portal for developers to accept Bitcoin directly. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, that's my exposure. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's okay. Good, good exposure. Yeah, that's uh, good stuff to know. Um, uh, Mark, do you want to, like, where would you put your interest in Bitcoin at? Like, you know. Uh, I first got interested in it uh, back in 2011, 2012 uh, time frame. I went in and out of it a couple of times. I was kind of involved in it in the Mount Gox. And anyone that's familiar with crypto will kind of know that fiasco and disaster. Luckily, I wasn't one of the ones that, you know, had millions of dollars that, that was lost. Uh, so I was fortunate there. Uh, and then I stepped away from it from a bit and I got back involved in it in 16, 17 a little bit and have kind of been involved in it from a lay person's perspective. Um, not, you know, I'm not involved in any projects. Uh, I, I don't have a business that accepts it. Nothing like that at all. But just from a lay person, decentralized self-banking kind of scenario. Um, and from that perspective, I'd kind of like to get Rob's 60 second elevator pitch on Tusk so I can sort of hear it from uh, the elephant's mouth, so to speak. <laughs> I like the elephant. Um, st- straight up. Uh, I always like to preface these conversations is that I love Bitcoin. I'm a big Bitcoin investor. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Bitcoin. And we're not competing with Bitcoin. So I always like to throw that out there because a lot of people, even in the, the 3D printed gun space, there's a lot of Bitcoin, what we call Bitcoin maximalists that just like Bitcoin and they hate on everything else. And and, and I hope it just, just doesn't develop, delve into one of those you know arguments because mm-hmm. um, it's just those things have been hashed to death. So uh, essentially, uh, we've decided 
three years ago, over three years ago now, we started and launched our project originally. Um, uh, and essentially, we, we decided to be Bitcoin for guns. Um, now, that encompasses a whole lot. It's kind of a loaded statement. But essentially, um, there are a lot of differences to what Bitcoin is and what we're doing. Um, we are a non-ICO community, op- you know, community-driven, open-source project. We never sold tokens, never sold coins. Um, we've been in a pilot for about six months and we're about to go full launch after our payment gateways are completed and those are being worked on right now. Um, but I think that one of the key differences is that we purpose built Tusk in our blockchain with the gun retailer in mind. So we're focused on lawful gun retailers. Um, we made it with a different blockchain than Bitcoin. So it's faster than Bitcoin. It's cheaper than Bitcoin. The pricing for transactions are always consistent. Um, so you always, so retailers always know what it's going to cost to transact with Tusk. Um, but one of the big things that's different in what we're doing probably than any other cryptocurrency is we asked the question and we think we solved it is how do you market a decentralized cryptocurrency to get adoption, but market it like a startup. And and to that end, and what we came up with is is that we created this uh, thing called the marketing partner that is a term limited and elected vendor to the Tusk decentralized blockchain that gets a small sliver of block rewards and its job is to use that for marketing to grow Tusk. And part of that is doing just sales. Um, unlike a lot of cryptocurrency projects, we spend more time going to gun-related events like SHOT Show, uh, Firearms Policy Coalition, NRA Convention, and we're the only crypto project there. There's no one from Bitcoin there. There's no one from the Lightning Network there. Um, and, and we believe, in, and, I, and I still believe this to this day, that the main reason nobody's using crypto for money, because no one is, not even with Bitcoin, uh, there's some technological reasons why. But the other thing is that people want to buy from people they know, like, and trust. And and ultimately, we believe that to close the last mile of crypto adoption, which no cryptocurrency has done yet, um, it's going to require handholding. It's going to require actual customer support. It's going to require marketing to get people to actually spend crypto. Right now, Bitcoin is a store of value. It's an amazing project. But it's a store of value and it's really not designed and not really being utilized very well as a payment system. And, you know, when Bitcoin goes up 10 grand like it did the other day, why in God would you waste it on buying coffee? And it doesn't make sense, in our opinion, for a deflationary asset to be used for payments. And so I can unpack any of that and and I'm not here to cause a fight. It just we're a very different project than what Bitcoin is, because our focus has always just been on getting people to use and adopt cryptocurrency because it doesn't matter how great the technology is if no one uses it. So can I jump in here real quick? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So I see what you're saying with something with the volatility of Bitcoin, you know, why would you, why would you want to turn your Bitcoin in for, you know, let's stick with the firearms industry rather than a cup of coffee since that's kind of what we're all here talking about. Why would you buy a Glock today when, Bitcoin could go up 30% tomorrow and you could have bought a Glock and a couple extra magazines. Right. I, I get that 100%. So I, I'm on board with that. My question uh, to you would be, how are you going to handle the early adopters with the limited daily volume that you have currently? What's the roadmap? So if I'm a vendor, I'm HankStrangeGunshop.com and a guy comes in, I want him to use Tusk for whatever reason because I can't get the proper payment processing through Visa, Bank of America, all of the things we all know about. I can't have him buy even something as simple as a $400 Glock with Tusk today, right? Because the limited volume that you have, a $400 purchase, would be the highest daily volume so far this year. So the 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 change in price because of well, well, you're you're confusing. uh, Well, one that's not true. Um, We've actually had over $3,000 worth of body armor purchased this year. That's not done through an exchange. That's on chain. And okay. that's not measured on daily volume, measured on an exchange or okay. a tracker like CoinMarketCap. So on-chain volume is not calculated or tallied by CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. So you're talking about trade volume on exchange, which is different than on-chain sales. So I just right. want to clarify that. Hmm. Right, and I'm completely aware hmm. of that. However, the guy that, that sold the body armor, he must still be holding the tusk, correct? For now, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at some point... He's going to have to go to a marketplace 
mm -hmm. uh, through an exchange in order to convert that, whether it's fiat, USDT, USDC, Bitcoin, whatever he decides, in order to use that to pay his rent, to pay the invoice for who, if he was, you know, uh, not the manufacturer of the body armor. So that's my question. I, I understand the on-chain argument. But it, once again, if I'm HankStrangeGuns.com and I want to, and I, I'm not trying to be defensive, I really want to know what your road, roadmap, what your plan is to overcome the early shops that pull this on that can't turn the, the, the tusk into something that they can use in their daily to, you know, to, to pay Davidson's for the gun that they just sold when they want to buy another. Sure. So two things. One, um, our volume has definitely been fluctuated, but we don't have payment gateways yet. So part of the problem is we have a list of retailers that want to use it right now, but can't because we just don't have the payment gateways out yet. Um, where it's baby steps like everything else. Um, if you do look at our volume, though, from most of November, December, we had volume in the thousands every day, um, upwards to 15,000. So our volume has gone up and down depending on what's going on so how do you get people excited about a project and want to invest in, in in other words increase that daily trade volume it's marketing and so one of the things that we're doing right now is well we're just started sponsoring several podcasts currently the bronson and corbin kaufusi which are two nfl players that are working with us they're helping us do uh, recruiting more influencers to come on board so we're in the last week alone we uh, are talking to three very prominent other additional influencers that we're going to get on board and look at sponsoring and working on things i'm fielding calls from retailers all over the country right now um, almost on a daily basis so people that are waiting for payment gateways because they do want to use it and most of the early now I don't try to bullshit people, right? I say, look, you're probably, one, you're probably not going to get sales for a while if you do. And two, you're probably going to have to hold the tusk for a while until we get more liquid. So we are very open and transparent that this is a process and there are things that have to fall in line. Where does it start? Well, it starts here and it starts with the marketing. And we have a lot of marketing that's going to be rolling out. So, for instance, um, another gun builder out of, I keep forgetting what state, it's either Mississippi or Alabama, one of those one of those down south states, um, is gonna be building some giveaway rifles for us at our TUS theme. And we're gonna be launching those giveaways starting, I think, probably the 1st of March. So I gotta look at when that um, proposal is set to go through. And so we're building and going to be creating a lot of buzz and rolling out the marketing now. So that was what the roadmap is for this year, is to build up that liquidity, to build up that infrastructure and get as many people excited about the project. Um, and yes, for the retailers that need money right now and can't wait, they'll come in later. And so there's a lot of retailers that see us for what we're doing and they support what we do. And those are going to be the earliest ones. And honestly, those ones will be also the ones that are going to be the most widely rewarded for coming in early. It's like anything else. So definitely something we're very cognizant of and thinking about all the time. Rewarded with an increase in the value of the tusk they hold or rewarded somehow through Tusk with additional coins, what, how would they be rewarded for being early adopters? Oh, well, that could be one way. So for some of the early pilots um, that, so in our pilot program, um, we have an allocation of Tusk that we are giving to the early retailers to help compensate for their risk and coming with us in early. So we also have a merchant directory at Tusk.network, so we're giving them free marketing. We also, between the various players on our project and our socials, we do a promo um, outreach blast through our social media. So we have over 400,000 followers on the various accounts that we operate. So we're promoting those initials. So so there's a lot of, I like to say I'm trying to build relationships out doing our outreach, but it's about say, how can we help you with in-kind until we really get the volume going? And the volume will come. And, and, and I'm, I'm solid at that. We've been here three years. Um, even when we were a token before we launched our blockchain, we had weeks where we were getting $50,000 a day in trade volume. So to me, it's just, it's baby steps. Ultimately, it's just, we have to get the word out there about what we're doing. And now that we're just about ready to launch the payment gateways, um, we're now beginning the marketing. So I think that's just part of the process. Yeah, let me so, just jump in here for a second if I can. I think, Alex, you have a question? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just wanted to let everyone know who's watching this. Because I know some of this might be confusing for people, or, or, you know, I mean, it's confusing to me. So I'm going to assume, you know, uh, that it's confusing for all the folks out there as well. What we're trying to do is is help people 
get a clearer picture of what's going on here um, because that's really important. The thing that I just got out of what uh, you know what Rob is saying here is that the marketing aspect of it is incredibly important, right? It's probably job one in a situation like this. Um, and so I, I think I understand why. Uh, Mark, Alex, do you guys understand why marketing would be job one or do you question that? Um, I'll start with Alex. No, I think you're I think you're on the money. Um, mm. Bitcoin is scary to people who don't know anything about Bitcoin. Um, mm. Digital money. What do I have to do anything about that? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my, my parents have made that argument multiple times when my, whenever my brother tries to get them in bit, in, in, into mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a fair argument from their perspective because they don't understand yeah. anything about and it. I, and they're, I not saw, gonna, they're not going to pay attention either. Right. And so. I saw a guy. There was a guy here. Sorry, we didn't get you, uh, which we will if you're still here, if you have specific questions. But there was a guy who said that he lost his entire life savings, I guess, in... Uh, mm in Bitcoin and you know he feels it's like a Ponzi scheme and stuff like that um, so I know there's people out there who feel that way as Mark said you know there were scams in the beginning of that and and we had someone on before who said they got taken advantage of Let, let's make it clear he didn't lose his entire life savings mm -hmm. because of Bitcoin now maybe he lost his wallet or he, yeah. he said because of an EMP let me correct I went back and got a statement he said I lost my entire life savings in bitcoin because of an emp um that's literally doesn't make a lot of sense emp well, i don't even not, understand what that means yeah it's literally not possible if he's taking the proper protocols to back up his wallet mm -hmm. i mean emp doesn't destroy paper and pen as far as i know right uh, so yeah. i mean i i don't know I, I i find that pretty difficult to believe yeah if he uh, if, if it was done properly mm -hmm. i mean if he right. obviously had it stored on an electronic device and somehow it got emp'd that's on him. That isn't a Bitcoin problem. Mm -hmm. We're not talking like an EMP in the sky. We're talking like a power surge or something. Is that what he's talking uh, about? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm basically putting his comment up there. There hasn't he... been any EMPs going off in the atmosphere, right? Yeah. Right. No, not that okay. I know of. Not that I know of. But if he wants to clarify that, we could definitely touch on it. I understand that there's people that have a lot of apprehension and there's a lot of things that could happen, right? People got conned and all that kind of stuff yeah, sorry it's, alex go ahead it's, no it's it's a new and scary technology to some people and they don't understand it and marketing mm -hmm. will certainly help that mm -hmm. um so i think you're 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 on the right path with that idea you're on mm -hmm. the right path with the 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 circularizing of the economy and mm -hmm. being able to use tusk for multiple things make sure to check out hankstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts